in front of your variables, you can use something called range. Here you can control your minimum and your maximum range. So let's save this, hit back. And now you have a slider from the minimum to the maximum. So you control it like this. So if all your values are private in your script, but you really want to see it in the controller to keep an eye on the numbers, but you will not make all of them public, then you can always go to debug mode. So go up here to the right and choose debug. Now you can see all the numbers. Another good feature to, to know about is uh, grid snapping. So as default here, you can see it's moving 0.25. And if you go up here, here you can control the snapping. So I will just change it to one. So now it will move one tile at a time. We all know this issue that we are typing in a lot of numbers. We are adjusting our game and we are moving around some objects and then we figure out that we are in play mode. And when we go out of play mode, we are going back. So to fix this, go to edit, preferences, color, play, play mode tint. And you can change this to any color, but I will cha change it to red. So now when you're in play mode, you can't notice that you are you aren't in play mode. So this will help a lot. Inside your script, if you have some function here and you know all these have something to do with the player, then you can do something called the region. So if we type region here and call this player controller and down below here, we will say and region. Now you have made a new region for this. So here you can uh, close it down. And now here you have the region for the play controller and you can still keep making something else like this. And now you know inside here you have all the functions you need for in this example, the player controller. And you can just open it up here or close it down to get a bit better overview of all your functions. Here you can use something called header. So if you type header and in here we can say uh, stats and underneath here we can use a header as well. And this one we can call controller. So now when we save this and head back to Unity, our script is better organized. So now we can see all this up here is for the stats and all this down here is for controllers. If you wish to have some more space between the headline and the next uh, object down here, you can open up the script again. And here you can use something called space. So if you type in space and in the parentheses, just this is the amount of uh, distance you want. So let's say 20. Let's save, hit back. And now you can see from the controller and down to the first one, you have a larger distance. If you are working with some empty game objects like here, and you would like to see them in the game, then you can mark all of them. Go up here to the right, choose an icon for it. If you still can't see them up here to the right, you can make them bigger like this. So now you are able to see your empty game objects in the scene. So are you fighting with some collisions that should not interact with each other? Like in this case that we have layer one should not interact with layer two. There is a better way to do it like this. So let's de just delete all this, head back to Unity. In Unity, you can use edit, project settings, go to physics or physics 2D, depending if you are in a 3D or a 2D game. Down here, you can control it here, where we have the rock and the player 
and the rock should not collide with the player collision and the rock itself. So if you remove this, it does exactly the same, just without any code. We all know this issue when we are dragging objects to the list that sometimes we click the objects and it disappears. We can of course lock it up here, but we all know sometimes we forget to unlock it again. To fix this, you can simply just right click your script and press properties. And now we have docked it here, so you can actually just dock it here in the button. So now if you go to another item, it will still be down here and you can always drag them to the list. So if you need a variable that you can see in the inspector, like this. But you don't want it to be public because now it can be accessed from any script at all. Then you can make it a private instead, like this. And then you can serialize fill it like this. So now you can't access this from any script. And this is actually how you should do with all your variables. And if you need to access it from another script, then you can change it to public. With this serialized field, you can still go to Unity and you will still be able to see it in the inspector.